All right, so Paul, we have these neutrons and protons and electrons, and they have to be in the right ratios to make the right recipes. But the energy or the, the electromagnetic force between protons and electrons is, well, it's gigantic. So how do you actually get things that want to repulse together? Like, there, there has That's to be right. something. We've said things with the same charge repel each other. Yeah. So it's no mystery why the electron should want to stay close to the nucleus, because the nucleus is positively charged. It's going to suck in the negatively charged ones. But, but if there's six protons, they had to be stuck there somehow. Incredibly close together, 10 to the minus 15 of a metre apart. But they want to be apart. Uh, but they're all positively charged. They're repelling each other like crazy. So there has to be some sort of energy that is keeping them, pushing them together. That's right. So you can do a potential diagram if you just felt an electric charge. Okay. So if you've got a positive charge here, this is the energy of another charge. Yep. And the energy goes up as you get closer. So if you fire another proton towards a nucleus, it's going to be pushed away from it. Yep. It's going to be repelled. Um, and this proton becomes very, very strong. So really, the nucleus should blow itself apart. So there must be something else going on here. Yeah. And this, I think, was what puzzled Rutherford originally. That how can these positive charges stay squashed together in such a small pace? So we're going to need, when in doubt, invent a new force of nature. So we've got two forces of nature we've talked about so far, gravity right. yep. and electric forces, repulsion and That's right. attraction. So we're now adding a third. Yes. And it has to be stronger than electrostatic electric repulsion. Let me guess, we call it the strong force? Yes, damn these physicists, they're so imaginative. So we have the strong force, which has to also be short range, because if it was long range, it would suck all the electrons in as well, or something like that. That's true, so it's really strong, but only over a very, very small distance. That's right, and in fact, um, there's some weirdo quantum mechanics about how these things work. In quantum mechanics, forces are all caused by exchanging virtual particles. You can get a particle appear out of nowhere and throw it to someone else, and as long as the particles are small enough mass, you can get a distance. So for electrostatic force, it's actually photons of light. Right. So what happens is a positive charge is creating, borrowing energy from the universe to create these virtual photons which fly out and pull or push other things around. What's the case in the strong force? It's actually a boson that does it, which is much more massive. Okay. And the, the bank of the universe, you can borrow no mass at all to make a photon for as long as you like, but you can't borrow the much heavier mass to make one of these mesons okay. um, for any reasonable length of time. Is that why the range is short long? So they, the things can attract them if they're close, because they can borrow the energy to make a meson that jumps backwards and forwards, but not for long. Okay. So we've got this very strong, very short range force. Now if we just had the strong force, the potential is going to look something like this. Because as it gets closer, it's going to pull it way down and it's going to be so strong. It's a short range force, so when yeah. the particles are a long way apart, there's no potential, it's just flat. But when they get really close, oh, lots of energy, lock them together really hard. But, okay. And then you combine the two, you end up with a diagram like this. So you're, you're getting closer, so you're starting to repel, so you're kind of being pushed away, but at some point then they're equal, the strong force and this repulsion is equal. And it sucks it in. And then it sucks it in. And just imagine um, if you had this as a straight, let's make sure it in the, of course it's a three dimensional potential curve again. Yep. Let's show it in two dimensions. Uh, let's move it around. Um, just imagine trying to play golf when the holes look like this. It kind of more looks like a, a putt putt where you have to get it over, but if you hit it too hard, it's gonna sail right over. Yes, so I can actually, sh um, this is what, the potential of a nucleus actually looks like. Okay. So if you had a proton with this much energy, you can only get this close, or maybe if it's coming in from that side, it can get that close, but it can't get any closer. Yep. But if you could somehow get it over the lip, wham! Then you're in. Generate huge amounts of energy. Um, another way to think of it in two dimensions is like this, it's a volcano with water level. Yes, so that's right. Yes, water so is the energy level, and that means you can get the protons that can fly in and it will bounce away, or fly in and bounce away. But if you made the energy level higher, you raise the water, eventually it might you know, pour into the middle. Um, let me show what this actually looks like. It's another one of my highly sophisticated simulations. That's a nucleus, and I'm going to throw some protons at it. All right. It's a bit chaotic here. So we're seeing some that kind of just sail way past, and then some that are it Depends how close they go and how right. fast they go, but they're all being pushed away. 
much like two North Poles are magnet, they squirm and they worm and they push and, each other away. That's right, until you push them away. So it's going to be very hard to add a proton to a nucleus. Okay. Um, but if you do, if your total energy is enough to get over the lip, then it can fall down and liberate a colossal amount of energy. It's about 600 million megajoules per kilogram if you can actually get these protons close enough that they can fall down into nuclei. That was a lot more than, say, the chemical energy and stuff like it's that. It's a lot we more than even the at. gravitational energy. Yeah. So this is a colossal energy source. It dwarfs everything else we've talked about so far. So it doesn't happen that often because you don't usually have enough of that total energy. But when you do, you have this huge energy source. That's right. So at last, we seem to be looking at something that might just about be powerful enough to keep our sun going. That would be useful.